Okay, welcome back. We're going to do a quick math problem here. First, we're going to start off with some descriptions. This is our economy, remember? Income or GDP. It can be a particular number any time. Let's say it's, oh, I don't know, 18,000 at this point. Now, that's how much stuff we've made. That's our income. That's our description of what's going on. And yet, that amount of production, that amount of economy, may not employ everybody. If this is how much stuff we're making, that's fine and dandy, but if we make that much stuff, does everybody have a job? And the answer might be no. There's a conceptual idea of full employment output or full employment income that might be more. So for example, it might be 22,000. That's where we would want to be. This is full employment output or income. This is where we want to be, but this is where we are. And this is where the Keynesian model comes into place. Keynes said we can be stuck here at an equilibrium that's below full employment. And this gap of 22,000, which is full employment, minus 18,000, which is where we're actually at, there's a gap of 4,000. This is the GDP gap. And his equation is all about what do you do? If you can't rely on consumers to increase their spending because they're so freaked out about the economy and they're not particularly willing to spend more, and if you can't rely on business people willing to invest in their businesses more and spend more money, then you can't rely on these two components of GDP or aggregate expenditures to do the job, so you end up with G. And so a lot of this equation is all about what should G do if there is a gap of 4,000? And the answer isn't that complicated if you remember our little diagram, I mean our little mathematical equation of last time. If the gap is 4,000, here's the gap, then the question is, how much do we change government spending, that's the delta, to get to 4,000? We just don't change it by 4,000, we change it by 4,000 times the multiplier, which is 1 over 1 minus B, or the marginal propensity to consume. So let's figure it out. If the marginal propensity to consume in this case is equal to 0.8, what do we have? We have, we need to change government spending, that delta is change, and we need to change it not by 4,000, but by 1 over 1 minus 0.8, so we're multiplying it by that stuff there, and 1 minus 0.8 is 1 divided by 0.2, and that is 5. So we're changing government spending times the multiplier, which is 5. We have 4,000 over here. So change in G times 5 equals 4,000. Let's bring the 4, divide this by 4, let's see, 4,000 divided by 5 equals change in G. See how I did that little algebra? Divide this side by 5. That gets rid of the 5 here, but you got to divide that side by 5. So we now have 4,000 divided by 5. Let's do that over here. 4,000 divided by 5. 5 goes into 40, let's see. 5 times what is 40? I think it's 8. So that's 40, da da da, 800. That's our answer. So the change in G equals 800. That's really, you know, your, your professors are going to do all sorts of things with this, with this model. I can't cover everything. They're going to talk about what's the equilibrium output, etc. And that's all interesting, and it's truly interesting. But, you know, this is the thrust of this model. This is why they forced you to do the algebra. And this is why Keynes talks about the world in this way. If there is a gap, if there is a recession, if there is a depression, what do we do? We can't rely on consumers. We can't rely on business people. We have to have government expenditures fill the gap somehow. How much do they have to expend their money to fill this $4,000 gap by? They don't have to change it by $4,000. They change government spending by something times the multiplier. In this case, 800 times 5 is going to equal, oh, there's the multiplier. 1 divided by 0.2 is 5. 800 times 5 is going to equal 4,000. So if you think about it, 800 government spending times 5, the multiplier, equals 4,000, and we're back to full employment. That's the concept. And remember what that multiplier is. The government spends 800, 
somebody gets the 800, so we've got $800 worth of roads. Those people get it, they spend 8% of it, so we get $640 worth of new GDP or income because those people who got the 800 to build the road spend some of it on computers and cars and chairs, and now all those things get made. And then those people who got the money for, for making those have their income go up by 640. They spend 80% of that. So what is that? That's 480 and on and on and on. You add up all those numbers and you get this finally 4,000. That's the multiplier effect. That's the algebra behind it. And that's why you do this problem. Um, I don't know what your professor is going to do. They can do all sorts of things. I'm going to go one more. You don't really have to do it unless you want, but I, I have to. I'm obliged to insert taxes into this whole equation because if you have government spending, my friends, they're getting their money from somewhere, and that's taxes. Well, I hope that explains why you do the math, and um, I'll either see you in the next one or not.